In our previous video, we talked about V-model and two-way binding. And we said the idea of two-way binding is that any change in the input element makes a change in our data, and vice versa. Any change in our data causes a change in the input element. Well, that was on the input element. But what about using V-model on custom components? That's what we will discuss here in this video. So let's get started. Before diving into the details, I recommend you become familiar with props and emit function. I made a video about them. The link is in the description box. Actually, we have two cases to use vmodel with components. The first one is reusable form components, which have a single vmodel directive. The second one is reusable form components with multiple vmodel directive. So in this video, we'll go over the first case using one vmodel. Now, as you can see, we have custom input as a child component with one input element. After that, we will register it inside parent component. So, to implement the vModel with custom components, we need three things. vModel directive, props, and emit function. Let's start from vModel on custom input component with title property. Now, how do I pass the title property or any property to the child component? Well, all we need is a prop. So in view 3, we have a default prop name called model value. The next step is to update model value when our input changes. To do that, we use event function with custom event called update. The second argument is event target.value as a payload. So the benefit of the update event is that we don't need to register it in the parent component because it works directly. But here we have a question. What if you want to change the type of element or add some classes or attributes? Simply we can bind something called dollar sign address object to our input element. What does address object do is inheriting all the attributes that we set in the parent component, like the type of element, classes, and placeholder. Now let's repeat our custom input for each field as needed. As a result, we have now a form by using just one vModel with one input element. That's it for this video and see you in part two.